The story continues with Pram and Dezer in a market that Dezer finds quite familiar, almost unchanged over the years. He remembers visiting this place in the past, long before things took a different turn. Pram, however, leads Dezer to a hidden alleyway, a place Dezer doesn't recognize. In this hidden spot, Pram guides him to a shop where he once sold his sword. As they enter the shop, Dezer notices a strict store policy, no refunds, no matter what. This policy strikes Dezer as a sign that the shop owner is really focused on making money. Pram, though, has no desire to take the sword back. He doesn't want to hold it again. However, Dezer believes the sword deserves another chance. They both enter the shop, and Dezer can't help but notice the tight security in place. There's even a guard present. The shop's owner introduces himself as Wujikuan and asks if they are here to buy or sell. Dezer expresses his desire to buy the rapier that Pram sold. Wujikuan reiterates their strict no-refund policy, but this is exactly why Dezer wants to buy the rapier. Wujikuan then shows Dezer the rapier, but it's not seen as a valuable sword. Wujikuan explains that its worth lies in something other than combat. It's a kemuvin, a special item with a different kind of value. It's typically used by nobility to give as a gift to their loved ones. Dezer is confident in recognizing this unique item, as he's seen one before. Wujikuan appraises the Kemuvin's value at 40 silvers, a significant increase from the mere 3 silvers Pram had received for it. To Dezer's dismay, Pram had been unaware of the Kemuvin's true nature. Wujikuan explains that Pram had hoped to appraise it as a sword, which severely undervalued it. Now, he's selling it as a Kemuvin, commanding a much higher price. Pram becomes angry and calls Wujikuan a swindler, but Dezer intervenes. He acknowledges that Wujikuan is right in this instance. It's a matter of business. Dezer, without hesitation, agrees to buy the rapier for the 40 silvers. Wujikuan, however, regrets not asking for a higher price, given Dezer's willingness to pay. Dezer takes possession of the rapier, examining it closely. Wujikuan, perhaps a bit cynical, suggests that simply looking at it won't help. Opening this intricate item requires skills beyond the reach of an amateur. Dezer then uses his magical X-ray vision to see the sword inside its scabbard and notices something written on it. He hands the sword to Pram, who hesitates to take it but eventually does so upon Dezer's insistence. Dezer instructs Pram to press a groove on the sword's hilt and draw the blade. When Pram does this, he's astonished to see a shining blade inside. It's unlike any metal he's ever seen, not iron or silver. Dezer reveals that this metal is called Blancium, harder than steel and lighter than a feather. Blancium is used to craft the finest weapons. Pram realizes that this is the very weapon he once wielded in a past life. Dezer suggests that they should leave, but the shop's guard blocks their way. Dezer asks Wujikuan to remove the guard, and Wujikuan agrees to do so once they leave the sword behind. Dezer points out that Wujikuan sold him a Kemuvin, and he paid for it. Wujikuan claims it's a different story if the sword is made of Blancium. Dezer suspects that Wujikuan might be going back on his word, and the guard refuses to let them leave, stating it's what his master wants. The guard then attacks Dezer, but Dezer skillfully dodges the attack. The guard tries to attack Dezer again, but Pram steps in to protect him, stating that he doesn't like fighting but won't hold back if they intend to harm Dezer. Dezer then playfully reminds Pram that he had vowed never to use that sword again, which flusters Pram. In response, Dezer reassures him that he's just kidding and asks Pram to demonstrate his abilities instead. The shop's guard seizes this moment to attack Pram, but Pram skillfully dodges the assault. Dezer believes that the sword suits Pram perfectly, but he also notes that Pram's opponent's attacks could be lethal if they land. He thinks Pram still lacks experience and wonders if he can win this fight. As the battle unfolds, the guard notices Pram's determined eyes, which impress him. The guard launches an attack, and Pram dodges before delivering a counterattack. However, the guard's defenses are strong, and Dezer observes that Pram's strikes have been too shallow. He suspects that Pram might be struggling to gauge the sword's distance accurately. Dezer realizes that if the fight continues like this, Pram will be at a disadvantage. The guard is starting to understand Pram's fighting style, and Pram will need to target the guard's vital points to secure a victory. Pram attempts this, but the guard anticipates his move encounters with a kick, knocking Pram down. Dezer encourages Pram to believe in his abilities. Pram then notices something written on his sword, which ignites a newfound determination within him. He ponders who Dezer truly is and whether Dezer already knew the secrets of the sword and the words inscribed on it. However, Pram decides to set these questions aside for now and focuses on winning, as Dezer believes in him. He attempts to attack the guard from behind, but the guard anticipates the move and strikes Pram. In a swift move, Pram slices the guard's sword in two and knocks him out with a blow to the chin. Dezer checks on Pram's well-being, and Pram assures him that he is fine. Pram acknowledges that if not for the sword, he would have been the one lying on the ground. 
The Zer suggests that it's time to leave, but Wu Jiqiun informs them that the door leading outside can only be opened by the guard they just defeated. If they want to leave, they'll have to abandon the sword behind. In a decisive move, Pram slices the door, and together, they exit the shop. The scene shifts to Pram and Dezer as they make their way back to the academy. Along the way, Dezer asks Pram if he's hungry, and Pram admits that he is. Dezer kindly buys skewers for both of them, and Pram expresses his gratitude for the sword and the skewers. Dezer downplays the favor, saying that everyone has their own trouble, then maybe he shouldn't have interfered with Pram's issues. However, they're now a team, and helping a friend in need is natural. This brings tears to Pram's eyes, and Dezer wonders if Pram doesn't like skewers. Pram clarifies that it's not about the food but the fact that so much had happened to him before he came to the academy. He had lost his beliefs and was uncertain about what he should do. Now, he has a friend he can rely on, and it makes him happy. They then enjoy their skewers together, and Pram expresses his gratitude to his parents, determined to walk his path with his friend using the words his father left for him. The scene then shifts to Romantica, who is still practicing to control the ball. She finally manages to get it inside the circle and wants to share her achievement with Dezer, but then she remembers he's not around. Romantica goes on to cast several wind strike spells, aiming for the circle on the wall. She successfully lands all of them inside the circle. Afterwards, she heads to the Alpha class and meets Donetta there. They both go to the Alpha class cafeteria, where Romantica is pleasantly surprised by the delicious food. Donetta encourages her not to be shy, and Romantica enjoys the meal without any hesitation. She praises the food, and Donetta asks if she has come here to give her reply. Romantica confirms that she has, and Donetta mentions that he will introduce her to the members of Blue Moon. She returns the Kemuvin to Donetta, and he wonders if she doesn't want to go out with him. Romantica clarifies that she doesn't and reveals that she has already joined a party in the Beta class. Donetta finds this perplexing and wonders if she was forced to join that party. Romantica explains that she made the choice of her own free will. Initially, she didn't like it, but now she's having fun. The leader of her party is helping her improve her skills. Romantica brings up Donetta's earlier comment about Beta Class being a group of commoners considered trash and wonders if he has no intention of changing that view. Donetta asserts that he doesn't, which surprises Romantica. She then shares a surprising revelation. She used to be a commoner. Donetta's face contorts in shock upon hearing this. He asks Romantica if she's joking, and she insists that she's not. Romantica explains that this is why she ended up in the beta class despite being a noble. However, she feels fine about it now, as she believes her new party won't view her the way Donetta just did. Donetta admits that he wouldn't have invited Romantica to his party if he had known she used to be a commoner. He appreciates her honesty, and Romantica finds it annoying that everything turned out just as Dezer had predicted. She realizes there's nothing she can do about it. Romantica then informs Donetta that her party plans to move up to the alpha class, and this makes them rivals. Donetta confidently declares that he'll defeat everyone in her party. Romantica urges him not to underestimate them, but she eventually leaves. Donetta becomes angry and recalls a traumatic childhood memory. Commoners in his domain revolted against the nobles, burning down his home and executing his father. He watched helplessly as it all unfolded. In the present, he harbors deep resentment, believing commoners are nothing but dirty trash. The scene then shifts to a newspaper agency that discovers a beta-class party is going to participate in the ranking tournament. The newspaper's owner is amazed, as this has never happened before. He instructs his employees to be the first to publish this extraordinary news. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more anime recaps.